This ITX case is literally made from PCB and all of your cables plug directly into it for power. That is something we have never seen before. So let's see its full potential by building a custom water-cooled ITX build. So I've got a fairly unique case for you all today. This is actually called the Singularity Computers Phantom ITX case. Doesn't look like much of a case at the moment, but it is a full power board design that you have to assemble. And essentially once it's all together, things like the power supply, they help with the structural integrity. Uh, all of these go in. You can fit a 360 millimeter radiator as well. And the awesome thing about these is it saves on your cable management because you can see that you have the connections built into the actual tray. So I thought this was really unique. So I really want to give it a try and see how it turns out. Now there is a step-by-step -step process to building this. There is a manual available as well if you are interested. So I'll be following that along and we'll see how easy the build process is. Today's video is sponsored by Team Group's new T-Create Expert DDR5 memory kits. These kits come in both black and white for a clean and professional design for both gamers and creators in mind. Currently offered in both dual and quad channel configurations, supporting up to 96 gigabytes at speeds up to 7200 megahertz. If reliability and multitasking is a priority for you, you can check these kits out using the link in the video description below. So one of the first steps for putting this case together is actually mounting the power supply. Now the power supply cutout is actually ATX in size, not SFX. And they say that mounting the power supply is actually what gives the case its structural integrity. Now this is one of the first things put in place because the back of the power supply is actually going to be blocked off at a certain point with some other brackets. Now I did end up going with the ROG Thor 1000 watt power supply. I think it's a nice looking power supply so it'll really suit this open frame system where the power supply is not actually hidden. I'm not exactly sure what to expect here, but the manual does say to plug in the 90 degree power connector right now because we're going to be adding brackets on the back and it's gonna make it harder to access this later on. So also make sure the button is turned on and we'll leave it at that. Okay, I'm a little lost at this point. So I have to install this piece right here. Now the problem that I have is that the power cable is coming along here. I don't know whether I'm meant to try and hide the cable under here to make it nice and clean um, and then put this on or if I'm meant to just let the cable sort of hang out the back here and then put it on. Guide doesn't say anything so I, I am a little lost but I might just let it hang out the back, install this and then I'm sure once the build is finished I'll will know if I've done it right or not. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm on to the next step of installing the radiator mount brackets and I need 12 standoffs and 12 screws, but I only got 11 screws in the packet or I've lost one somewhere. I, I don't see how I could have lost it because I left all the screws in the packet and then tipped them out onto the desk, but maybe I have, I have no idea. Um, but the point I'm trying to make here is maybe including a few extra screws in the, the case kit would come in handy just in case things like this happen. I mean, I've tried to look everywhere for a screw and I cannot find one, so I'm, I'm not not sure if it was one less or I've lost one. <laughs> anyway, let's try and make it work. I ended up stealing a screw from the top here. Plug in the included right angle mains extension cable to the back of the power supply now as the universal radiator mount will block access to this connector. Depending on the orientation of the socket, a PCB cover might need to be removed temporarily to route the cable under it. Okay, so a few of the steps prior say to install this and now it's saying to install it again, uh, but the cable does need to go under here. So I need to remove this. So I think the first step that mentions putting this in needs to be removed. <laughs> so for this system, because it is so open, I wanna use as minimal cables as possible. So I'm gonna go with the Filmtake Swire Fans EX that simply magnetically connect together like that. I only require one cable for power and lighting, but I'm thinking I'm not gonna use the USB cable that goes from the controller at the back, hooks around to the front and then into the motherboard, because I don't want a cable to hook around. Like if, if there was a cutout here or something, maybe I'd put it through and then plug it into the motherboard. But I don't really want a cable coming around the outside and then plugging in. It just, it's just gonna feel out of place and I don't like how aesthetically displeasing that may look. So these will stay as RGB or whatever preset was saved on that controller. Now, while we are cooling both the CPU and the GPU, we've actually gone with a P360 radiator, which is a lot thicker than the usual S360 radiators that we normally use from EK Waterblocks because we do have a CPU and a GPU in the loop. Now, the CPU is not gonna saturate the loop that much. It's only the i5. Where the heat is going to come from is the 7900 XTX GPU. So I think adding the extra thickness is actually going to benefit us greatly, especially when there's not any limitation to thickness. 
I also ended up choosing this particular one because I don't know if you guys noticed, but on the top and on the bottom, it's kind of like this silverish type color, which also matches the ASRock 7900 XTX Aqua GPU and the top of the power supply grill as well. It's the exact same color. Okay, so I am struggling here a little bit and I don't know if there's a fault on where the holes were made in the PCB or not. Uh, the top one seems to have a lot of clearance. The hole is completely out. So I can get a screw in the top, which I managed to do. Now the two bottom ones where you would insert the screws, the radiator is actually sticking over the hole a little bit. So it's making it hard to get a screw in there. Now granted, there are different size radiators in terms of width. EK Waterblocks doesn't seem to be working with this particular build. All of the other holes are lined up and everything's screwed in. So I don't think it's an issue with me not lining things up properly. But you can see the distance the hole is away from the edge of the PCB on these bottom ones compared to the top one. There's more room in the top. Now you can't really move the bottom ones because they're also in line with the power supply keeping it in place. So I'm not 100% sure what to do with the bottom two screws. So the motherboard I've chosen to go with today is the Z690i Aorus Ultra. Our other Z790 motherboard is currently in another ITX system. So this was the next best one that we had. We've got plenty of USB, USB type C. Looks like the Wi-Fi antennas have received a knock or something. I don't know how that happened. And this NVMe heatsink is absolutely huge. You can actually fit two NVMe drives in this. So we're definitely gonna be utilizing this to reduce cable management. So the CPU we are going with today is the i5-13 1600K CPU. This is a gaming PC, so we don't need all of those high core counts. And that way we're actually saving a lot of money as well using this CPU in the system. Most of the games we're gonna be playing are not CPU heavy games. It's gonna require the GPU to push out all of those good gaming pixels. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? So I ended up swapping the CPU block from the full nickel to the full accental because the full nickel had some streak marks on it. Not really wanted on the system. Plus, I think that looks really nice. And the retention plate actually gets screwed in at the back here. For the RAM, we actually have our Tough RAM XG DDR5 memory from Thermaltake, 5600 megahertz, CL36 timings. I tried to go with RAM that kind of went with the whole GPU and motherboard aesthetic. So it's actually got a bit of that sort of grayish color on there, a little bit of nickel, and of course, black as well. Let's just remove the first layer of the heatsink. We're only going to install one NVMe drive today. So that should be plenty for what we need. This is a one terabyte Corsair MP600, and we definitely don't need the heat sink on this one because the motherboard has its own built-in one. So we'll go ahead and remove that. So this particular motherboard actually has a screw down point rather than a latching point. So we'll make sure that we get that in place. It also has thermal pads at the top and the bottom of it. So it'll be kept nice and cool. And to put this beefy heat sink back on. Wow. I feel like I'm just holding like a massive CPU block. The whole thing just looks like a big square because the CPU block just takes up so much room and fills in all the gaps. And then between the RAM and the heatsink also fills out the rest of the motherboard. Actually weighs quite a bit as well. So the GPU we're going with today is the ASRock Aqua 7900 XTX. And it's quite an interesting way to mount this. The PCB part is actually going to have a screw go through it. And then we're gonna use a nut on the bottom side of it. Now I just need to get this into the motherboard to begin with. Gosh, can you imagine if I went with a longer GPU, it would be sticking out here. <laughs> Hmm, I wonder how good this PCB material is gonna be at holding the GPU up and preventing any sag. We will have to see once I install these screws. Okay, before we go any further, just a couple of thoughts that uh, I've been thinking about and I really don't wanna leave out of this video. So number one, it's quite obvious the GPU, it does sag down a little bit. It's got a, quite a bit of weight on this side, probably because it's much longer than the motherboard, but it's not the biggest GPU out there. So you're gonna have this issue with a lot of GPUs. So what I suggest is underneath here, there is a few holes that are left that have not been touched. Now I'm wondering if we could have something come out of one of these holes here, run along the top of the power supply, and then it has an adjustable height thing on there so that it can push the GPU up. A nice little GPU support holder. Number two, because the case primarily relies on using the power supply as the bottom support, the fan has to be up the top. Now for anyone who does plan on water cooling, you need to make sure that you have everything completely tight and no leaks because if you have a leak, it's going straight into the power supply grill. Now with everything screwed in, the case seems actually pretty structurally sound. 
Now I will always say that I do prefer a metal case over something like plastic or a PCB. Metal just feels a lot more premium, but I understand why they've used the PCB because all of the connections are built in. Let's get the reservoir installed. So for the pump res combo, we're going with the Singularity Computers Resonance 2.0. This is a pump res combo, uh, but I'm gonna have to add my own D5 pump, I just realized. I've also put these brackets on the side there because I'm gonna mount it to the radiator on the back like that. One thing I'm a bit uh, iffy about is the actual finish on this though. This isn't normal for Singularity Computers. I wonder if this is kind of like a production sample or something, but it's definitely not polished or anything on the sides. It looks like it's just been CNC milled and then sent out. Um, yeah, you wouldn't normally get it like this. I, I know that for a fact because I've had plenty of Singularity computer products before. Anyway, it doesn't mean it's not gonna work. So we'll go ahead and install the D5 pump and I'm sure Singularity computers will let me know what the go is for the finish on the side. Getting to the point of actually being able to install this has been an absolute pain in the bum. The EK screws for the radiator, they are not long enough to actually fit this in. So I had to find some other screws. Bits power, their screws are the same size as the EK screws, so they were not gonna work. The only ones that I managed to find that had both the long screws and the short screws was Corsair. And luckily they had the right threading size for this, so we're using Corsair screws on an EK radiator with singularity computers water cooling. <laughs> So Singularity Computers also made us some sleeve cables for the system. So the EPS cable plugs in like that, and we can plug it into the power board. Make sure that clicks in. Look at that, that looks actually pretty clean. Then over the other side here, we put the motherboard cable in, and then we also plug that into the power board like that. Look at that, that is super clean. So there's one thing I really wanted to test out with this system. Since we used a single 360 millimeter radiator to cool the 7900 XTX GPU and a 13th gen i5 CPU. Now currently in game, we are sitting at 37 degrees Celsius on the GPU, which is absolutely incredible. And the CPU is sitting at 46 degrees Celsius. Now both the GPU and the CPU are both sitting around that 72% utilization. We're getting around 200 FPS. Now I think that's quite good for such a small machine. And I think it benefited us putting that extra thickness on the radiator. Now, even if this was a more intensive game, there's plenty of play on the GPU and the CPU. We've not even cracked 50 degrees on any of them. Now guys, I built an ITX system inside the Corsair 2000D case, and we packed it full of liquid cooling gear. The problem is it did not go as smooth as we thought. So if you wanna see that video, click here now. Thanks for watching.